Hello everybody, this is Crafting Redstone and welcome back to a brand new Redstone tutorial today. So what we're going to be having a look at today is a random number generator or RNG for short. And today's video is going to be a showcase, explanation and a bit of a build of a random number generator. So you guys can understand how, to, uh, how it works and how to feature it in a Minecraft computer build, what you might be doing. Because they are so very useful random number generators and here is one in front of us. So you might be thinking, why is it very useful? But a lot of programmers use random number generators all the time. So for the easy ex example um, would be for maybe if you wanted to make a game and you wanted to make a random dice, then you'd want a random number be to be generated representing the dice each time. So each time we click this button, it's going to generate us a random binary output. As you can see, it's going to be a different number. Well, it could be the same number, but it's going to be a random number every time nonetheless. So here we go. As you can see, it's getting a different number pretty much every single time. And it's completely random. Um, here, you look. Is it's just got a completely random number, so I guess that's all there is to say about it. So now we're going to be moving on to the kind of explanation of how it works. So let's get cracking with that. So we're going to start with the input, and here I featured two monostable circuits. So if we press this input, as you can see, it's going to go through here. But what we want to happen is for the pulse to be shortened, so it is only a very, very small pulse value. So as you can see, the redstone comes along here, and when the redstone activates, this piston moves up and then breaks the circuit. So if we press this here and just watch it repeat it, the repeater goes off for just a split second as the piston moves the block out of place. So there we go, we get a very short pulse. The other way of doing it is using an observer block. This will create the same sort of thing, but instead it's gonna cause two pulses. Um, but yeah, you can use either one of these. I've just put them both there for you for you to basically pick which one you want. So the pulse then travels up here, and it's a very short pulse, and it first travels along this line here. This line here is the reset line for the RS null latches, um, which I guess I can explain it right now. So the RS null latches are these, I've kind of just taken out one of these and placed it over here. So they're basically just two droppers facing into each other, so imagine like that facing into each other, um, but you just want them to be facing like that, going into each other. One needs to have an item in, like so, whereas the other one doesn't need to have an item in. And basically what happens, you can shift the item, so it's going to go from this hopper to that hopper to this hopper, depending on what the inputs are. So here we've got some comparators, um, which basically get an output depending on what's in the dropper. So if, you, if we press this, as you can see, nothing's going to change because the item's in this hopper. Um, I keep saying hopper, but it's a dropper. And if you press this button here, the uh, output is going to change because the items move from this one to over to here. So how this is relevant to this line here is that the reset line um, basically causes all the items which are in these droppers here, so like, such as this one and this one, um, it's going to force all these items to move into this end dropper here, which is resetting them all, giving them all the same value. So once they've all got the same value, the values need to be assigned by these randomizers back here. So let's move on to that. So once that line has been reset, we want a small delay, actually, let's put that onto a four tick, it shouldn't be on one tick, it should be four tick. Um, although it does work on one tick, but it's probably safer having it on all four ticks, so it's going to be a bit of delay. So the short pulse is going to go across here, reset them all um, to their kind of base state, so they'll, if we just have a look, um, all these will light up, there we go, and then reset to something. So the resetting is when they all light up, and then they all get set to a certain value um, later on. So they all get set to that value and all the items move into these end hoppers here and then the pulse travels along down here to these mono stable circuits. So let's take one of these out and I'm also going to get an MBT hot dropper there by control clicking. There we go. So this dropper has some items in. Now let's explain the relevance of these items. So in the past you may have seen a monostable circuit built somewhat like this. So it's a similar sort of thing to what this piston is over here. Um, but normally you just have one item into it and it would move back and forth from here. But on this one we have two items. One is a stackable item, so the arrow, and one is a non-stackable item such as the sword. Now this is very, very important. You just want one of each in there. You don't want any more. So you see we've got four in there. We just want these two and that will make there so it, there is no bias in what it outputs. So we've got these non-stackable items and a stackable item in here and the relevance for this I will show you right now. So if we get two droppers like so. 
one has got a, a non-stackable item in and the other one has got a stackable item in. So if we get a comparator now and take comparator outputs from both of these, you will see they produce different redstone powers. So let's put one there and one there and then let's get a lamp. Can we find a lamp anywhere? Um, can we put one on the end of there? No, it needs to be one fours like so. So there we go. We've got this output. This one with the stackable, non-stackable item in, sorry, produces a much stronger output than this one with the stackable because um, this is kind of treated as 1 64th of the power um, of a, well, it's 1 64th of a stack, so it produces a lot less power, whereas this one is counted as an entire stack, so it produces more power from the comparator. So this is really, really important. So let's move back on to why there is a diamond sword and a diamond arrow in here. And we're going to demonstrate this by placing a few of these next to each other. Let's place about six, something like that. And actually, let's separate them um, between one. There we go. So we've only got three now, but hey-ho. Uh, we're going to place a redstone line along here. And hopefully, this activates. Let's get a... Um, let's get rid of those. And let's get a button. So if we press the button now... What's going to happen is one of those items, or maybe it's not going to work like that, maybe we need a block in between, let's put something like there, there we go, um, and across there like so, um, and put that button there. So if we press this button here, it's going to output one of those two items randomly. So this is really important that it outputs them randomly, so we're going to get the reverse now, press it again. So as you can see, it's just going to output a random one. Um, and we can keep doing that, they're going to be random every single time but as you can see we lose the items every time we output them like this so we want to catch the items and then put them back into the dropper which is where this comes in here so like the monostable circuits which you might have used in the past this one was going to produce a short output, can we get that? Uh, let's do that again see if we can get the output, so it's going to go into the hopper and then back into the dropper over here but this is where the non-stackable and stackable items come in, which are really important. It's going to pick one of those two at random and put them into this hopper and then back into the dropper. Let's see if we can get... So it's going to arrow that time. Uh, it's going to be a sword that time, yep. Uh, and sword again. And you can see it's going to output a random one arrow that time. It's going to put a, output a random item into this hopper and then it's going to put them back in the dropper. But this is really important because when a random item goes into this hopper, we can use the comparator to measure what sort of item is in there, a stackable or non-stackable. And from that, we can have two different signals, which we can then output something else. So let's move back over here. So each one of these uh, monostable circuits is going to output a random item from a in here and depending on whether it is non-stackable or stackable it's going to light up a certain amount of redstone um basically redstone wires here let's have a go so watch the repeaters at the back only some of them will reach it so there we go it must have been a sword in here because that produced a full length output so when a, a stackable item goes in here it only produces signal strength of one so it only reaches this first line whereas when a st um, non-stackable item goes into it, it has much more power so it can reach this third line over here so it can reach the repeaters and activate the repeaters. So this is basically how it works. Every time, if we do it again, it's going to produce a random output. There we go. And every time it lights up, that means there's going to be a non-stackable item there, which produces more power so it can reach the repeaters. So then let's move on to back to these RS null latches. So the signal reaches these RS null latches and then powers this block, which then powers this line here. So if we go back to the reset line, remember all the items are moved into this end dropper here. So when this signal comes along, it powers this end dropper only in certain places, uh, remember because of the non-stackable items. So it only powers certain of these repeaters and only some of those repeaters will power these droppers. Which basically means that when this um, is powered, those items which got moved back into these hoppers from this reset line then can sometimes move back into the original hopper from which they came from. So let's um, demonstrate that. So if we press this, um, let's find the input that might be useful. There we go. If we press this, the, all the items are going to move into this end one, and then where the non-stackable items are, they're going to move back into this. Uh, sorry, back into this one over here. So the reset line moves them over here, and then when the um, non-stackable item or stackable item reaches this hopper, it's going to move some of them back into here, but not all of them, as you can see. So that means that then we can take a comparator output from these RS null latches, depending on whether the, where the item is, basically, and then that's going to be your random output, which we output uh, out here. So that's been a bit of a quick overview of how it works, and I hope you've understood it all. If you um, want any parts of this clarifying, just ask a question in the uh, description, or not description, in the comments, and I'll answer that question for you um, about how this RNG system works. So we've got the mono stable circuits here, 
they produce a randomized power which changes the RS and all latches and then can produce an output. So I hope you guys got all that and um, now I guess we're going to move on to how to build it. So we've got a very small one over here and the difference between these is basically showing you that um, there is a stackable design. Each one of these are part of a layer so you can add as many bits to this system as you want. So if you want more bits to it, you add more of these layers to it. And um, well, don't forget you'll have to refresh it, redstone signal eventually because it will run out. So you can make this like 16 bit, 32 bit, this is just an 8 bit one and the one over here is a 4 bit one. Or this is referred to as a nibble sometimes and this one is referred to as one byte. So they are the two differences, it's a stackable design, um, but now we're going to be moving on to the um, building of it so you guys can understand how it, you can build it in your own world. And um, yeah, I think we're going to build a little one like this, so just one which is just one nibble or four bits or half a byte. So we're going to be building this design here. So these are the components you're going to need. Now I've put four blocks here. You can just use one block, but I find it really helps colour code things. For, so for this example um, of building this RNG system, I've used blue as an output, yellow as a reset line, green as a process, and red as a input. So no, then after that you're going to need the basic redstone parts, so like redstone dust and redstone repeater. You're also going to need a comparator to take those outputs. Then you're going to need a dropper and a hopper to make the RS and all latches and the one disabled circuit. You can use a lamp to show an output or an input. I find it's quite useful. Um, then you can use an observer or a piston to make that first monostable um, system. So it will produce a very short pulse. Then you need some sort of input method. So I've put a button here, for example, and then a non-stackable item. So anything which does not stack, so like this, like this, and then the stackable item, um, which does stack like a lead or something like that. So you can see it stacks into 64. So you've got a stackable item and, sorry, a stackable item and a non-stackable item, which you're going to need as well. So let's move on with building this design. So I'm going to grab a few of these parts here. Uh, we're going to need that yellow one as well. And I'm just going to grab those and we'll leave the input there for now. So we're going to build a line out here. So this is going to be the input. And we're just going to want to put redstone on top of here. Not like that. We want to put redstone on top of here like so. And now I'm going to need that button. Um, let's swap that around like so. And we're also going to need the lamp for the input. There we go put a lamp there and a button on top of it so it's going to produce an output now this way you want to put either of the designs on one stable circuit so it was that one there which you can put there um, and redstone block so it's going to create a one stable circuit you'll also need a repeater behind there actually um, so you can see it shortens the outputs or you can do the observer method which is just like this is it yeah that way around yeah so you want the observer like that and I put a redstone block on it just so you can see the output so let's have a look you can see it's going to be a very short output up there. Let's do it again. Very short output compared to the long button press. So now from that you want to build the reset line. So I'm just going to build it across like so. And one further out. And this is going to be what resets the RS null latches. And then you also want to build the other input line which goes across here like so. And you want to put a fairly large delay on this one. Um, I'll put two ticks there but you can do more. Um, but yeah there's the, the input line. So now we're going to build the RS null latches and we need the dropper for these. So we want droppers going like so um, and one there. And remember you want them facing into each other so kind of like this um, but kind of a block next to each other so it's going to be like that. So we're going to build those blocks now. Uh, we're going to want them all to be facing into each other so let's place some blocks here and build them across like so. Not like that, we want to build them facing into each other so like so. Now you want to put an item in one of these and it doesn't matter if it's stackable or non-stackable for these RS null latches. Uh, I'm just going to put um, a stackable item in, so like so and like so. And now we can get rid of all these blocks here and we're going to move on to the randomizer monostable circuits at the back now. So to wire up these monostable circuits at the back which aren't currently there, we're going to want to put a block here and some blocks here. And we want to put a repeater on every single one of these. We want to put three blocks back like so, uh, a few more, there we go, and redstone across all these like so. And then we need another line of blocks and this is where the comparators are going to go, so like so. And now we want to put the monostable circuits in, so let's put a block here across here like so and some droppers facing this direction. Now I want to put hoppers facing in them, so kind of like the RS null latches, but with uh, one dropper being replaced with hoppers like here. 
And now we want to put the non-stackable and stackable item in. So we just want one of each. We don't want any more. We don't want it like this. Um, we don't want basically anything like that. We just want the one of each item like so. Um, and also don't do it like this. Just, just put one in of each. That's how you want to do it. So now we've done that, we want to put another item in like here. And just basically fill all these items up with a stackable. Uh, sorry, all these droppers up with a stackable and non-stackable item in like so. So once that's been done, we're almost finished. We just want to loop this line around here, across here, like so. We want to move that upwards, like so. And redstone across here, like so. So you see the redstone comes from this observer block. It comes down here. And then we'll output a random number every single time. So let's just test it. It's always important to test as you go. And I'm looking for that. There we go. And we want to put a button there. And it's going to produce a random output every single time. So, so just have a look at those repeaters. It's producing a random output. And that one didn't do anything. There we go. And that is just because the stackable or non stop item creates a different wire strength as we, uh, well, a different signal strength as we explained over there. So now let's test the entire contraption as a whole and hope it's going to reset and then um, set them. So let's have a look in here. Are they going to be different? Yeah, that one is going to be on, whereas the other ones are going to be off. So it will represent a 4, I believe, in binary. And now we just want to build the output. We can just get rid of these blocks under here just to minimize the amount of blocks, actually. And I've destroyed the floor. Um, so this is unnecessary, really, but it just makes it look a bit prettier. Can we get rid of that? There we go. And now we want to put the last bit of it in, which is the output. So we want to get a comparator output from all of these here. So like here. So you can see that one's lit up. And we want to put blocks above here. Now you can do any sort of output you want. I'm just going to do a very, very simple one. Um, so we're going to put redstone down here. And... Can we just put lamps there? We can indeed. So I've just put lamps there. So that's a really, really simple output. You can wire it up however you want the output um, so it'll fit with whatever computer you're building. So there is the very simple random number generator. As you can see, it's going to generate a random number every single time we click it. So it works just like the other one. It's just 4 bits rather than 8 bits. So I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. Thank you so very much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like. As I said, if you've got any questions about design, please don't forget to leave them in the comment section. And if you have enjoyed this, you might enjoy some of my other videos. So do consider checking out my Redstone Tutorials playlist, um, which I guess I'll put in the uh, little top right hand corner of the screen now. So if you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, but this has been Crafting Redstone. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a good day. Goodbye from Crafting Redstone.